group of companies you've headed for 14 years in a very short period of time you seem to have done something right what would you say that right thing is well i think it's not all right there are rights and wrongs mm -hmm. and i do believe till you make some, when you make some wrongs you have to learn from them and yes. move ahead and then it will become right one day uh, there have been periods when we have stagnated as a group uh, my parents passed away advisors came in my uncle uh, Aditya Birla was very gracious enough to help me for about two or three months. Yes. Then my aunt, Mrs. M. P. Birla helped me for a good four or five years. But uh, the people who came in was, were more on advisory capacity. And I do believe that, of course, they, had, they played a very important role. And uh, unfortunately for me, my father had no senior executives when he passed away. He had like, kind of sacked most of them. So it was an organization deprived of professionals and of certain important systems. So these advisors were responsible for creating those in my organization. But I still do feel that till you take your own responsibilities, till you're able to, t business management is to a great extent risk taking. You have to learn to ha take some risks, some strong decisions, sometimes you're needed to do so, which may not be very congenial with the way people are working, but you have to be risk taking. And an advisor cannot do that, because they are uh, there as custodians. It's not, it's not the ownership concept. So sometimes you, you kind of stagnate because the advisors are not ready to take that plunge and they're not really ready to, to, to go, f go, all, go, all, go all out for it, which you as an individual might have done so if you were ab able to take the risks at the right time. So we did stagnate as a group for to, to a certain extent. I did make some mistakes myself. I cannot say I've done every, everything right. Uh, but yes, well, we've come of somehow, sometimes, somehow come out of it uh, positively and uh, satisfactorily, but we, we, we still, every day is, is, is a day you move ahead. If you're going to be satiated and you're going to sit back, that, that, that doesn't get you anywhere. You have to keep striving towards perfection. Do you have plans to go global, for example, and uh, get into entertainment like your cousin Kumar Mangalam has done? Because that seems to be the most glamorous business model for most business people in India today. Uh, well, honestly, we, you have to be global in today's environment, whatever yes. business you're doing. Yeah. As far as entertainment is concerned, directly as far as if you're, if you're insinuating films, no, that's not in my plan at all. You have a today. lot of movie star friends. You're, it I would have. seem the obvious next big thing for you to do, but you have gone into lifestyle products, and uh, yeah, uh, which no Birla has done in the past. They've stuck to commodities and they've stuck to fairly conventional business businesses. Yeah, because I, I do feel that the lifestyle segments which I've gotten into are kind of extensions of the industrial segments I'm into. So it's like a forward integration. Yeah. And I do feel uh, that certain industrial segments, unless you get the ultimate reaction of the customer or a consumer, uh, when you can really go out in the market and sense what their reaction to your strategies, to your product, to your marketing is, it, it, it doesn't become complete, the whole chain of supply. So uh, we have gotten into some lifestyle segments, but it's an extension. It's, I would still not say it's a mainline business for us. Our group is still mostly into industrial products, and that's our mainline business. Lifestyle is an offshoot of that. But we, ha we are into media, I've got, we've, for, but that's for children. Like We've got education books that's for right, children, yeah. which we just launched last year. But are you saying Bollywood is a complete no-no for you, or music, or any of the uh, other... I businesses that are entertainment as, related. As a business, I would never say no no to anything, Shobha. <laughs> Everything is open yes. where it gives us opportunity. But yeah. as of today, I definitely think it's not in, in, in my plans in the near future at all. Also, do you think that uh, uh, by comparison to uh, some of your um, cousins with far bigger empires, do you feel in any way disadvantaged or do you think that's the target you'd like to set for yourself and that's where I want to get? Uh, in the next five years, what is your main business target I, as I, of now? I don't really compare myself with anybody. Uh -huh. Let's say I have got a certain, I have inherited a certain, certain structure of circumstances, and it's my duty to do the best I can in my in my capacity with my abilities, and uh, I, I I don't believe in numbers either to a certain extent. Yes, they are important, and I'm not saying I'm com completely ignorant of the same, but it's not something I've really focus on. Mm -hmm. uh, and comparisons, yes, I, I don't really make comparisons in numbers. I would make comparison that is the other person uh, excelling in whatever they're capable of doing to a greater extent than I am in my circumstances. Yes, I would consider that. But not a number game or not a com competitiveness in that way. It's, that doesn't intimidate me at all. We'll be back. I'm talking to Yash Birla. 
and more about his lifestyle and more about him as a human being, as a person, his passions, his interests, his life after the break. I only dance to techno, trance, music. So when I have a party, that's what I play. Welcome back. I'm talking to Yash Birla. Yash, tell us about this extraordinary wardrobe you have. I believe you have clothes going back several years that you refuse to part with and you still fit into. I, I am very passionate about clothes. There's no doubt about that. I won't be I would be uh, doing injustice to my passion if I say I don't have, I, I, I'm really not fond of them. I am, but that's just like you have hobbies, you have some people like cars, some people like going out, some people like gambling, some people like doing, I don't like any of those. I like shopping for clothes. Any favorite designer? Nothing particular show. I basically what I do is I, I, I don't wear anything from head to toe which is of one particular design mm -hmm. or I read in a magazine and reproduce that. I wear what my mood is, I combine things, I may wear a uh, designer t-shirt, I may wear high street trousers, I may wear shoes from, or chappas from Rishikesh. But Rishi you also said that you buy clothes, whether it's in Milan, something catches your fancy, it could also be in Vrindavan. Yeah. I'm very interested, what would you buy in Vrindavan that you would wear and uh, enjoy wearing? And uh, it combine? could be pajamas, drawstring mm -hmm. trousers, mm -hmm. it could be a, a t-shirt with Lord Krishna on it, mm -hmm. it could be a vest with Lord Shiva on it, anything. I bought and so your things. tattoos with Krishna? Yeah, my tattoo has Krishna. And it has uh, Radhe Radhe and Har Jaisu Krishna written on it. It was done by an Italian artist actually. And I actually had to show him references because he's Italian. Hindi is not his mother tongue. Yes. And I had to write Jaisu Krishna and Radhe Radhe. Um, I am a Krishna Bhakt, so I feel he's with me when, he's, when I've got this on me. And when you're in Vrindavan with your family, yeah. are you there as a Birla or are you there as just a devotee? An anonymous person, I'm a pilgrim. A, I'm as a Krishna Bhakt over there. Yes. Uh, you know, they say the, sac the soil of Vrindavan is sacred. Mm -hmm. You're never allowed to take the soil out from that place because mm -hmm. the, it's, it's, it's the holy uh, soil touched by the holy feet of the Lord. So a lot of times roam around without my slippers, mm -hmm. incognito and in, inconspicuous. I make my children also do that because I feel a part of their upbringing is, the, the part of their upbringing is very important where I give them uh, the basics, the roots of our culture, the roots of our tradition. But I'm told that these days you've started taking your work back home with you, which you never used to in the past. Mm. Is that something that bothers you? And is it the new set of circumstances that has led to this change? No, it's, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I enjoy it a lot. It just makes me feel that I'm much enjoying my work much more. But what does bother me that I, I don't want to get attached to it, attached to it emotionally, because even work, you have to be non-emotional about it. If you feel something is not objectively good for your future and something is strategically not fitting in with your goals and your strategies, you have to get out of it. Uh, so I do try and watch myself that I don't get attached to it. When I get my work home, yeah, I keep thinking I should do this tomorrow. I make, I get up in the night and make some notes. This is what I have to discuss with my people tomorrow. This is what I have to do. This is what I have to implement. Uh, this is some, something new. This is new. It's yes. the past couple of years. It didn't happen from 1990, the time I took over from my parents, uh, from my father. But it, it, it's evolved, which gives me a sense of satisfaction that now I feel more responsible. Uh, work is a priority for me. I would never shirk my responsibilities at any cause. Uh, if somebody needs me at 12 o'clock in the night for my work, I would be there for him, my executive, for that work. Does that really cut into your time? Because I know you spend a lot of time in your gym. You spend a lot, a lot of time on yoga, on mm. doing your pranayam and so on. And that seems to be uh, a focus that has meant a lot to you all these years. Yeah. Is this new awareness, this new change cutting into, no, into that? I don't deprive myself of that life at all because that's my priority. Yeah. Spirit, my spiritual quest is my priority. It's the most important thing to me in my life. Uh, your working life, your social life, your family life, everything fits in with that. And you're it's, gymming. Which is also very important. Swimming is health and fitness. Yeah, of course, yes. I do it. I do. I am a health freak. I eat only healthy food. But that also goes with sattvic food. I believe yes. in sattvic food, which mm -hmm. is pure food. So you don't eat at parties at all. You go to a lot of parties, but you don't, I don't touch eat anything. At all. You I don't, don't even have a. I don't even. I rarely have a soft drink. Yes. Also, sometimes I do if I want to. I want to enjoy a pasta. If I'm eating out once in a blue moon, then I'll have a diet coke. But uh, I rarely eat out because I love dal, chawal, sabji. Also made in a very healthy way, without any oil yes. and ghee and all that. You also have interesting uh, rave parties at home and elsewhere, which are often in an unconventional context, like uh, a baby shower. They are not. They are not. No rave. trance parties. How? Tra how? What would you call they them? They are. They are just parties which have only trance music. They're right. not raves at all. Okay. Uh, I enjoy 
if you if if you come in with me in my car, I've got maybe about 200 CDs in my MP3. Uh, about 75% of them are bhajans, mm. and 25% of them are techno and trance. Mm. These are the only types of music I enjoy uh, yeah. listening to, or dancing to uh, at a party or a discotheque. I only dance to techno trance music. So when I have a party, that's what I play. Right. Uh, it's not a rave at mm. all. It's my friends who I know coming to my house uh, and I'm playing techno or trance music in the background. The terminology used is a trance party or a rave party, but that's not it. It's just a type of music. I'm so glad you've clarified because that's something that people often associate you with. Yash, you met Avanti, your college sweetheart, when you were both really babies. You were really kids, like teenagers. How did that happen? Uh, well, actually, I met Avanti when I was first at junior college, as the early as I think when I was 15 or 16. But uh, for the first few years, that means almost four or five years, we are purely friends. We used to go out in a group, uh, absolutely no relationship besides pure friendship. And at the time when you were courting her and then planning to get married, uh, there must have been some little frisson in the family. They were a little apprehensive. Uh, I, I was going for my MBA at that time uh, in 1989 and they said you go for an MBA and after that when you come back and if you're really still keen on the girl, so of course you can get married to whoever you want. Ultimately it so happens that Avanti bonds very well with the rest of my family, my Birla, mother, the Birla family who exists today. Uh, she got along very well with my aunt Mrs. MP Birla, in fact my aunt was very close to her, very fond of her um, and in fact she's much better at keeping relationships than me. Uh, which I wish my parents, wherever they are looking, I'm sure that all the apprehensions uh, are taken care of and actually she's fitted in uh, better than they probably would have anticipated even uh, in an arranged marriage. So I'm happy that way because I do feel they are wherever they are and they're watching me and they're watching her and I feel happy about that. So Yash, I guess it's Avanti who really helps you keep your balance, maintain your equilibrium even in the most trying of circumstances like the kind of circumstances you've been enduring over the last few months, the media gaze, the speculation, the controversies, all of that. How key is her contribution in helping you deal? Well, I think that's uh, the, the, the most essential part of any husband-wife relationship. Uh, in fact, we take that oath when we go around the fire seven times in, the, in a Hindu, uh, according to a Hindu tradition is that all important events, all important information, all milestones in your life, you take on equally. Yeah, you have your different responsibilities as a husband and wife, which are quite well maintained. But uh, you have to share the burden from each other, you in hers and she in yours. And uh, we have a good understanding about all, those, all these things. And we, we are very uh, open about uh, talking about our problems with each other. And, uh, we're there for each other in all times, whenever we need each other. And I've never had uh, a time when I've had to feel a vacancy in that aspect, and in a husband-wife relationship. Three children in nine years. Plans for some more? In fact, when my first son was born, my second son was born, I was a little disappointed in, uh, at that event because I, I wanted a girl. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, the daughter came after a gap of uh, almost six and a half years after my second son was born. And uh, I prayed and I really wished and I hoped and that I get a daughter. And ultimately when she was born, it was like, it was like the world at my feet. And honestly speaking, even to date, four and a half years later, I don't have any strong desires after she's born. It's like my life is complete. It's like I've got whatever I wanted and I'm fully satisfied. So Yash, you're very much a hands-on dad. What's your idea of a great family vacation and what's the last one you took? Um, actually, I just went uh, a month, not even a month ago, three weeks ago, uh, ago to Rishikesh and my kids' uh, midterm break. Mm -hmm. um, I do know the trend is that most uh, children nowadays uh, and the parents like to take them to London and America and Euro Disney as a Disney World, wherever. Uh, it's not that I deprive them of that, I do take them sometimes. But I like to alternate it with a more basic Indian cultural holiday. I take them to Rishikesh, I take them to the Himalayas. My sons go trekking with me uh, wherever I go. I've taken them to all Badrinath, Kedarnath, Gangotri, Jhanda. My All my kids, even my little daughter has come with me to these places. Really roughing it out, being with the basic nature, basic life. 
I take them to Vrindavan, I take them to Nasik, uh, any religious places I go to, Tirupati. I take them, I try and take them as much as I can to all these places. And even on your own birthday, unlike a lot of people in the city, you prefer to take off and you go to one of your favorite destinations like... Yeah. Actually, I've not spent my birthday in the city for the last five years. It's usually, at, you see, the, the ideal time to trek in the Himalayas is this time, the end of September. Yes. Because that's when the, the, the snow has not yet come in and the monsoon subside. And I really go trekking to uh, altitudes which are higher than 16,000 feet, 16, 17,000 feet sometimes. So this is the only time you can really go there. So this is the time I'm usually in the Himalayas. Unfortunately, this time also I was scheduled to go there, but uh, the, the, there were landslides en route. So instead of that, I'm going to Tirupati because I haven't been to Tirupati for two or three years and that's, it's been calling me. Mm -hmm. So I've planned it on my birthday. So I'll, I'll, I'll go into Darshan of Tirupati on the day of my birth. My birthday. That's, that's great. So you heard it from Yash. The best way to spend a birthday is not to have a bash, but to maybe seek something higher and deeper within yourself. More when we get back. I would like her to be primarily a domesticated girl, but yes, with a career. Welcome back. We have a little surprise for you. A beautiful, beautiful young lady who has completely captured Yash Birla's heart. I'm sure you're dying to meet her. Welcome to the show, Shloka. You are very beautiful. Who is your favoritest, favoritest person in the world? Papa. Papa. And what about mummy? Four and a half years ago, when you knew it was going to be a girl, and how delighted you were. And tell us a little about that. Yeah, you see, uh, actually I had my first son almost just about 10 months after I got married. Uh, you know, I, my parents passed away in 1990 and I, I, for, a, for a whole year I lived alone in my house, absolutely alone. I got married after a year and, uh, you know, you, there were three people who went out of your life. So sure. I wanted life to come in. Um, so I was very keen to have a child very soon and uh, of course, Avanti was pregnant like one and a half months after we got married, so I was absolutely jubilant and ecstatic. And I used to actually keep a diary of every week passing till she actually finally delivered the baby. And the whole family was uh, there when my son was born, and uh, my aunt, Mrs. M.P. Birla, was there. She actually wrote Om on his tongue uh, in honey. That's our custom in yeah. our family that you write Om on a boy's.